All right, well, welcome to Polar Technology. I'm Ted Atwood. I'm the president and founder of Polar. And today we're going to talk about refrigerant cylinders, recovery cylinders, inside, outside, performance, appearance, specifications. And we're going to take a look right inside one of these things and see what they've got to show. <laughs> Each year, Polar receives 50,000 of these small cylinders in all different shapes and sizes. None of them look uniform. It's a good-looking pallet right here, but you can see back here, it's a pretty rough-looking pallet as well. Generally, the box holds everything together, but our job once we get these cylinders in is to find out a lot more information about them and make sure that we become the experts on the cylinder. A lot of the cylinders have obvious defects, and they're real easy to pick out, and you know that you have to do some work on them. The cylinder right here is missing valves and handles. You can see that it's, it's got damage to the... This one here has lost its handle connection. But many of these other cylinders look fine from the surface. They just they look like they need to be cleaned up and painted. But we're going to... Let's run them through Neutronics like we normally do. And then we'll bring them over to the other side and run through the routine. All right, here's step one. Let's get a shot of this cylinder on the uh, Neutronics machine, take a picture of what the gas looks like inside. All right, let's take a look at what the results were. All right, look at that, pure 22, good to go. All right, let's get the cylinder over to the other side and take a look inside and see exactly what we have in here. All right, this is the consolidation and pump down line. That's where we remove all the liquid, all of the vapor, and all of the impurities. What we do is the cylinders get hooked up, material transfers through here, through these large overhead lines, dumps into the distillation vessel, and all the impurities are pulled out over there. When we're done, the cylinder is in clean shape inside the tank. Normally, what we do is, when we're finished pulling the liquid and vapors out and all the impurities, we then pull a 2,000 micron vacuum. But today, just so we can take a look inside this tank, let's take a minute, pump it out, let's bring it over the line and see what's really going on inside this tank. But we're just going to pull out the vapors today, and we're going to leave some of those impurities that other people might leave behind in there, just so we can see what we've got. The distillation tank has a series of baffles and traps, and they'll collect all of the impurities. Here's a sample right here of what we pull out of a lot of these tanks. And this is very common to find in a normal cylinder. Of the more than 50,000 cylinders that we get in every year, six or 7,000 of them have valves that are obviously damaged and need repair. They look like this. Got a broken handle, they're missing the, the, the broken valve, they're missing the handle. They're, they really just need to come apart. They're obvious that they need that repair. This is where the easy stuff gets taken care of. Let's go ahead and pull that valve on there. These metal dip tubes in this type of environment, they last a lot longer than the normal rubber ones that are out there. The rubber ones would be shriveled and destroyed. You can see the impact from the, the acid and the corrosion built up on the inside of that valve right there as it scrapes off. Now that is spread throughout the entire tank. So we'll need to get this tank cleaned out when we're all done replacing the valve. But first, we're going to replace this valve with a brand new one. And then once we're done with that, we'll get it back over that vacuum line and we'll clean it up. But let's take a look inside of a tank that's really got some serious problems likely inside and some things that we saw with acid that we can't see outside. We'll do that right over here. All right, here are some tanks from the outside that have no obvious problems. Valves are intact, the handles are there, the, the threaded ports are in good shape on both of them. This one worries us a little because we see an excessive amount of oil weeping from the valves. That tells us it leaks. 
But we want to find out what else is going on behind that valve. Because this tank inside is a total mystery to us. Now, we've never done this kind of thing before, so I've brought with me a fire extinguisher and Keith. <laughs> Keith is known for his ability to destroy things, so we're going to let Keith destroy them for fun this time so we can try to find out what's going on in here. I'm going to get rid of that paper, and uh, this, this could catch on fire. Uh, I don't know the uh, combustibility of this oil at this point, but we're going to cut both of these open and I think Keith has been looking forward to this all morning. So I'm going to pull my shield down. Uh, I don't suggest anybody do this at home. Uh, particularly don't invite Keith if you want to do it at home. Alright, I'm, I'm going to get out of your way, Keith. You go ahead and cut that open. Is that awesome or what? That's just perfect. All right. How was that flame? See that? Well, the only thing that could have caught fire inside that tank is oil. So let's take a look and see how much oil we've got. Grab me that light right there, the, the uh, halogen light, the white light that we use for the tank. Okay. All right, we got the hole in the side of the tank. Let's really see what's in there. Holy cow. Look down in the bottom of that tank. That's oil right down there. That's, that's what gets left behind if you don't pull the liquid out of the tank and you only pull the vapor out. But more importantly, take a look at that dip tube that's in there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's shriveled up, it's really narrow, it's less than a sixteenth of an inch across, and it's definitely not passing much refrigerant, and more important, it's not passing a lot of vacuum through it. And I think what's really fascinating, let's see if we can get down in there, Ethan, it's, look at the bend and the kink in the bottom of that tube there, can you see that? That dip tube is a mess. Look at the inside of this tank. It's got lots of residue, lots of oil, and although Keith did a pretty good job of heating that oil up so there's not much refrigerant left, if you leave that amount of oil in a tank, it will always trap some refrigerant. It also trap water. So that oil right there, that's got to go. That's what that 2K MVP process that we started to talk about when we came over here was all about. It's pulling that oil out. It's pulling that water out. It's pulling all that refrigerant out that when you go to get a tank, it's in great shape and it's clean and meticulous. All right, we're going to try to cut this other tank open here so we can see inside this tank what's actually going on because we noticed that this tank wasn't pulling a vacuum very well. So we're going to give this one a shot next. 